الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم أستغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب وأتوب إليه حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما أما بعد Over the past few Jumas, we've been looking into the eschatology, those signs, those prophecies that every Nabi, including and especially our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the signs and prophecies he left behind for us to look for and for us to analyze. We've covered over the past few weeks again just a fragment of the amount of signs that have arrived in our time. Otherwise I could do the same topic every week. But I need you to get the purpose. <clears throat> so now that we've looked at the minor signs, we've looked at how will the world be set up, ready for the arrival of the Jal. Just as when we want to call a big alim, a big mufti here, you'd have the whole stage done up, you'd have that special chair brought forward, you'd have certain lights put on. Why? Because you're preparing for the arrival of someone special. So in that same way, the Jal has followers, the shaitan has worshippers, they are preparing for his arrival. Like I mentioned last week, the meeting between the government and the rabbis. Are you ready for his arrival? And they say, we're nearly there. Now, after you look at the minor signs, the situations leading up to the end times, now we must look at the major signs. What are those signs that basically confirm to you it's over. What are those signs that confirm to you that that end, that day of judgment that you were warned about every century since the beginning of man, that time is here now. And the Prophet wasallam regarding them, major signs, he says that they are such that they will occur so quickly, one after the other, just as beads fall off of a string. Just as if I was to have this tasbih and if I was to cut this string here, how quickly would all the beads fall to the floor before you could even blink your eye? This is what the Prophet ﷺ meant by each the major sign will come. It does not mean that, oh, as soon as the Jal come, next hour Isa is going to come. It is not going to be like that. But in comparison to how long the world has been around for, in that time, it is very quick. For now, even a century, in comparison to how long the world's been around, there's nothing. It's not even a percentage of it. So this is what they mean, that they will fall from a string. <clears throat> so let's look at the first major sign. Again, remember the minor signs we've set up. Muslims are no longer practicing Islam. Rulers are corrupt. People chasing money. People have abandoned Islam. The first sign that they say that will arrive will be the arrival of the Imam Mahdi. And this Imam is obviously no ordinary Imam. It is said that he will be the fifth king of the world. Some are probably thinking, what do you mean the fifth king? There will be many kings. When we say the fifth king of the world, there have only been a handful of kings that have really had power 
over this entire dunya. Every country, every continent. Even if you were to say, oh, what about the emperor of Rome? There were continents that they had no access to. So they talk about Imam Mahdi will be the fifth king to rule the earth. Sulaiman alayhi salam was one. He ruled the entire earth being a king. The Prophet wasallam spoke about this Imam. And again, just as they did with the Dajjal, he gave us signs to look out for, things to notice him. He gave it for this Imam as well. That this Imam will have my name. The name of the Prophet ﷺ, he has many beautiful names. The name we know him by is Muhammad ﷺ, meaning the one who is the most praised. And then you come Ahmad, the most praised person out of the few. So his name surrounds the three letters, Ha, Meem and Dal, all meaning what? Praise. And Imam Mahdi, now the letters are swapped around, but it comes from the same root. He said my, he will have, his parents will have the same name as my parents. Just as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's father was called Abdullah, his mother was called Amina. The same way the parents of Imam Mahdi, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, will have the same names. His father will be called Abdullah, his mother will be called Amina. This is the khasiyat of this Imam. Not only that, it is not that he has comparisons and commonalities, he's from the bloodline of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. He's from the bloodline of Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha. He's from her bloodline. And he is so special that he's not just a Sayyid from one direction. They say he is one of the few that is a Husseini Sayyid, a Hassani Sayyid, and an Abbasi Sayyid. So just as now with Imam Mahdi is a very tumultuous topic because the Shia claim Imam Mahdi as their Imam, and there is a group of the Shia that claim he has already arrived. He's already on this earth. But as we know, no one will know that until when, when Imam Mahdi will be in the Haram Sharif. So, just on that part, so many people have their own beliefs, their own ideas about Imam Mahdi. And the Shia claim that he has already come, he will come for them. We know this is not the case. Imam Mahdi will arrive in a case where Islam, Sharia and its application will be very less, very hard to find. So what will happen is, the entire dunya will be swept in fitna and people will all be looking, the pious people, where should we go? What can we do here? So they will all migrate. They will all migrate where? To the Haramain, Makkah and Medina. Many reasons. One, obviously that's our home. Two, that is where all the pious people will be. And three, that is where the protection will be. As we spoke about the Jar, which is the two cities you will not be able to enter, Makkah and Medina. And when he would be stood, to, stood on Mount Uhud and he was pointing, saying, That's the mosque of Ahmad. When he said, That's his mosque. There on that same mountain, they built a complex now, they built a temple. Now you can only guess with common sense who that is for. But here, that's a separate topic. So now, Imam Mahdi will not only resemble his family, will not only believe from his bloodline, they will say Imam Mahdi will resemble the Prophet He will be the living image of him. This is how beautiful this person will be. Now, Imam Mahdi, when people find out about him, he will be doing tawaf around the Kaaba. And people will recognize him. They will know the signs that I'm talking about, but in detail. And they will say, Ya Imam, let us take bayah with you. Bayah meaning let us give you allegiance. Give you our hand. And he, out of humility, no, 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 I'm no Imam. He will deny it, he will reject it. Again, this is the humility of these people. They don't feel themselves worthy. Then a voice from the sky will come. And this voice will say, this is not the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the way. This voice will say that this is the Khalifa of Allah. This is the representative. This is the Imam that your Lord has sent you. So take, obey him. This is what the voice says. Now obey him. So what will all the Abdal, all the pious people that are in that time surround? Like you can imagine, some of you that may have been Umrah. People are just doing tawaf constantly. Some people sat on the side. Everyone will flock to the space between the Maqam Ibrahim and the Hajar Aswad. They will all flock and you can imagine there are thousands of people there. And all these thousands have heard this voice 
And now they've realized we are in that time. That Imam, that every Nabi, 124,000 and beyond, have all come and all mentioned this person. He's come. We have to be that army. We are those people that speak about in the books that will have to fight the Jal, that will have to find the Jewish people, the Jews hiding behind the trees. This is that confirmation. And Imam Mahdi, after the people will take bay'ah to hands, he will then make his way to Syria. When you listen to the story of Isa and Islam and the Dajjal, you'll see why it happened in Syria. That is why Isa and Islam will descend. So you can see the connection in the stories. That what are the chances Imam Mahdi was in Syria exactly where Isa and Islam was to descend? Once the Syrian king finds out that Imam Mahdi is coming with his army to Syria, because this king is a kafir, the Syrian king, he will send an army back to try to destroy the Muslims. And Imam Mahdi, some people may be doubting, is this the real Imam? And like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends his khalifa, he sends his representatives with signs, with powers. With Isa alayhi salam, he allowed him to bring people back to life. With the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he split the moon. Now with Imam Mahdi, this army that will come and try to attack the Muslims, Imam Mahdi will open the earth through the will of Allah. He will open the earth and sink the army entirely. And then all those watching will accept, you are the Imam. We were right to follow you. And then after that, the army will make their way to Syria. Now, this with Imam Mahdi, you can carry on, but this is the main crux of his story. This is the main point. Now in succession, as I said, they will fall like beads off of a string. What is the next bead that will fall after Imam Mahdi comes? Remember, this is going to be very quick. It may seem like a decade, two decades ago, but in that time, it is rapid. Now, once they get to Syria, news comes out that the Antichrist, the Dajjal, or to the non-Muslims, they will see him as the Messiah, he's arrived. Then all the people will begin to fear the who ha and all know what we're going to do. Then Imam Mahdi, he will give the guidance, just as the Prophet ﷺ gave it to us, that if in your time you hear, if you are sorry, if you are farming, you are farming, and you hear that the John has come in your time, carry on farming. This is exactly how the Prophet ﷺ said he left it. And the ulama expand on it. What did the Prophet mean? If you are reading Quran and you get you hear the khabar on the news, the jal has arrived. So, you carry on doing your work. If you are with your kids, you are eating, you are doing whatever. And you hear news that the jal has come, ignore it, carry on. Now, someone think, if I'm eating, I hear the jal come, I'm not going to carry on eating my meal happily. That's not the meaning. What the meaning of this hadith is, don't get scared. Don't start hiding away. Now is the time to come out with your deen. Now is the time to show that strength in your iman. Now is that time. So it's not to fear. Like I mentioned, the jal is not meant to make us fear. Because we know the enemy. We know what he's about. And we know everything he's going to do is going to be a what? A lie. An illusion. We've got no reason to fear. People only fear that which they do not know. Which is why it is our job. Know who the jal is. You will have nothing to fear. Right. So he will arrive and all the Abdal, all the Muslims will be in Syria. Again, on his way there, along that path, he is doing exactly what we covered last week. He will, do in, he will be doing these tricks. He will have a mountain of food behind him. The Mu'mineen will see a white mountain. The Kuffar will see a mountain of bread behind him. You think, hey, what does it matter if he has a mountain of hovis behind him? What does that matter? Why it matters is, this will be in a time of famine. The entire world will be struggling for food. Remember, the sun is going to be this close to our heads. There will be no food growing. And the Jal will say, I've got food. And you think, hey, but who's going to fall for that? People do. We know when people are really struggling, completely destitute, people will sell their own family members. In Afghanistan, they talk about it. The fathers are selling their daughters just so they can buy food for the week. Selling their daughters. And this is the time I'm talking about. That people will be in that much hardship. 
So Dajjal will capitalize on that. I know you're hungry. I've got food. I know you want to go to heaven. I've got heaven here. Enter it. And on this side you will have a hell. And as I mentioned last week, it will be the opposite way around. What he showed you as his heaven will really be hell. And what he showed you as his hell will really be heaven. It's the opposite with him. The jar by definition means what? The biggest liar. Inshallah, as we are short on time, we will carry on with the major signs from next week, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if we are alive during that time, that he makes us one of those abdals that are part of the army of Allah Mahdi, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we are alive in the time that the Dajjal arrives, that he grants us strength and his taqamat upon the deen and the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah to grant us strength and proximity to him, the Quran and the Sunnah.